Welcome to another session of Close Calls with California Poison Control System. I'm Dr. Race Vora, Medical Director at Fresno Madera Division of California Poison Control System. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Dr. Cyrus Rangan, Pediatric Specialist and Toxicologist affiliated with California Poison Control, and Dr. Richard Clark, the Medical Director at the San Diego Division of the California Poison Control System, my mentor and a professor of emergency medicine and toxicology at University of California, San Diego. Welcome, Rick and Cyrus. Thanks, so we're gonna, we're gonna talk today about toxic plants. This is such a broad topic, but I wanted to introduce a case that I've seen uh, related to a plant called dumb cane. Uh, the Latin name is Diffenbachia. And here's the picture. Uh, this is a lady who was just making an ornamental bouquet at her house and unfortunately got just a single drop of the sap from this toxic plant uh, in her eye. And so she came into the emergency department with a very severe red burning eye. Cyrus, can you walk us through why this would happen? What is the chemical that's triggering this reaction? So on the surface of the leaves of the Diffenbachia plant, you'll find a sap that contains crystals. And these crystals contain calcium oxalate. And this is a very, very highly irritating chemical. So just a small smear of this sap that might be on your finger, if it gets into your eye or if it gets into your mouth, can cause a significant degree of pain, uh, irritation, and inflammation. Thank you. The special um, stain that you see here really makes the eye look very, very green. So that, that's actually something that we use in the emergency room uh, to just look at how bad the damage on the eye is. It's called fluorescein staining. Uh, and really, we have to work right away in order to uh, mitigate the damage uh, from this injury. Rick, can you talk about what, you know, in the emergency department we would recommend and some of the things that you would recommend even at home whenever somebody has an exposure like this? Sure. If someone like this comes into the emergency department, besides trying to understand the extent of the injury like you did with the fluorescein here, is the first thing we would do is to irrigate it out. We would take some sort of a water stream and we would flow through the eye to get any remaining sap out of the eye. If this had been an ingestion, where a child or an adult had actually eaten part of the plant, we would try and get out of the mouth, whatever that was, maybe irrigate that out, maybe provide some pain medication if it was quite painful and make sure there was no compromise of the person's airway and they were breathing without any problems. Great. In terms of um, what poison control deals with, you know, we sometimes don't get to see the plant because we operate a phone line. Uh, sometimes we ask people to send us an image of the plant to help out. Sometimes we'll even ask them to um, go to their local nursery if they have time to figure out what that plant might be, uh, although that's not always available. Uh, but I think it, it really brings home this point that we need to know what plants are in our environment uh, and be able to identify those. Um, there's a lot of other plants that can cause toxicity. What I thought we would do is maybe run through several other types of plants and then just um, have you both talk about uh, what their toxic effects might be because these are very common calls to poison control. Uh, so we'll start with Cy. Um, let's talk about oleander. This is a plant that you know I've got growing in my backyard. We see it growing along the highways here in California. What is so dangerous about oleander and why would we be concerned about an oleander ingestion, for example? Sure. A lot of people have oleander in and around their homes. It's got very pretty flowers, and so it's a very attractive plant. And uh, so we see that when people get into oleander, what oleander actually contains are chemicals that are very, very similar to a heart medication that we prescribe to people who have, who have heart disease, uh, namely digitalis. And so they have compounds in them that are very, very similar to digitalis. So eating these plants is almost like taking an overdose of that particular medication. So that then can give you abnormal heart rhythms or other issues uh, such as nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramping, et cetera. And all of these are symptoms that would require immediate medical attention. Great. Rick, we've had calls on our poison control hotline about people who wanted to make a salad and they went out and, and were able to actually grab some leaves from a plant called tree tobacco. Uh, and they unfortunately ingested that, that plant thinking that it was okay to eat and put into a salad. But what's so dangerous about tree tobacco and why would we be concerned about, about that person's ingestion? Tree tobacco is a plant that contains nicotine, just like domesticated tobacco is. 
and it grows all around Southern California and up and down the coast and has ornamental yellow flowers on it that are very similar to what you can see on the tobacco that we use for cigarettes and cigars. But all of these chemicals contain nicotine and nicotine people will take into their bodies through smoking when they do smoke a cigarette and the same symptoms that that causes at a low level, such as more rapid heart rate and some nausea and feeling a bit on the stimulated side would be augmented in somebody who might eat an entire plant that contains nicotine. They could have profuse vomiting. They can have convulsions or seizures. They can have a very rapid heart rate and irregular heart rhythms and get quite sick and sometimes maybe even stop breathing. So it's a fairly dangerous plant for people to go foraging and using in their salads. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's humbling to think about, you know, these different toxic plant species that are in our environment uh, and that we're interacting with um, uh, almost on a daily basis. Um, just by way of wrapping up, let, let's share some good takeaway points for our viewers, uh, whether they're a parent, a patient themselves, or uh, someone working in healthcare uh, about toxic plants. Uh, Rick, what would you say is, is a good good key take home point uh, when it comes to toxic plants uh, that, that we want to share with our viewers. Many people have plants around their house. It's, it's a great ornamental part of the furniture almost. A couple of things that I would do if I was a, a parent and had children around the house also with plants is to make sure I taught my children the importance of not eating plants, don't even touch things that you're not sure of unless you talk to your parents about it and understand whether there's any dangers. And then secondly, if I own the plants, I'm going to teach my children or, or I would learn what the names of my plants were and which ones are dangerous so that if somebody got into one, then I could tell somebody like a poison control center what the names are if I called them. Perfect. How about you, Cyrus? Any good take home points that people need to know about toxic plants? One way that we can uh, help ourselves learn the names of the plants is that whenever we purchase these plants to ask the, the person who we purchased from at the nursery, what is the actual name of the plant? And then write that name of the plant on a piece of paper and even put a piece of tape on it and put it on the actual pot of the plant so that that name is always there and you'll always have that name available uh, in case it's needed for an unfortunate exposure such as this. And learning about those plants and making sure, just as Rick said, about teaching our children about safety around plants is so very important to make sure that we prevent these exposures from happening in the first place. Great advice. Be, be aware, be prepared and call Poison Control if we can help you with any questions or cases related to toxic plants. Thank you both so much. This has been a great session and we really hope our viewers can get some good information uh, on this episode of Close Calls with California Poison Control System. Thank you both. Music